My name's James, and I paint minis. This is Spoon 37 Minis. So last time you saw them, the Death Guard looked like this. We just highlighted and shaded the armor. How do you take it to the next step? Well, we start off by painting anything that's going to be either black or metallic with black, if you see what I mean. I'm actually using some black primer here, but a bad black or any other densely pigmented black would work just as well. I am skipping along a little bit so as to keep the length of the video down, but I've done most of the trim as you can see that's going to be a sort of bronze gold colour, everything that's going to be silver, and anything else that I'm not sure about that might be dark or black. Obviously as we paint this we're being tremendously careful not to go too far over the edges, we don't want to ruin the armour colour as it was, because we've actually carefully shaded and highlighted that. But part of the point of this video is to show you how to take it from that to at least a three colour minimum. probably see here because I'm having to be fairly careful around these bits it does take a little while to actually get underway which is one of the reasons why I'm showing you just kind of the start and end of this process rather than the whole thing because otherwise I'd be showing you quite a lengthy video for just painting it black. Okay, so that's done, and now it should look something like this, so you can see there's a clear contrast between the green armour and the black trim, and all the other black details. And this is what it looks like from behind, particularly paying attention to the chainmail area that we're going to do next. So I'm going to point out what we're going to do. There aren't that many areas to do on this particular one, but it's mainly this chainmail here at the back. There are a couple of other small areas as you'll see, but we're going to reach out the lead belcher, the sort of gunmetal colour, and we're going to use it for a bit more dry brushing as I showed you in the basic shading and highlighting video. Same technique, but this is with metallic colours. Now because the area is small, this medium dry brush is far too big so instead we're going to use the starter brush which I said was far too small for dry brushing in the original basic shading and highlighting video but for this because I've got to get into a small area it's actually ideal so again you load up the brush with paint you wipe it on the tissue until almost nothing's coming off and then you're ready to go. So as before we turn the model round we're aiming for this chain nail in the middle but we want to avoid getting any paint on the legs, so we just carefully run down the length of the chainmail. At first glance it doesn't seem like very much paint is coming off, and the truth is, there isn't, so I go back to the palette and get a bit more, and then it becomes a bit more obvious what we do. As long as you don't get too close to the leg armour, this should work quite nicely and gives you a nice chainmail pattern where the other areas are black, like the background is black. And I'm doing the same on these pieces on the back of the legs, and I'll do the same for the equivalent piece on the back of the helm as well, uh, just to highlight the ridges on those so that they stand out as being, you know, shaded and highlighted, even though it's just silver over black essentially.
Right, now once that's done, it should look something like this, where as I say, the recesses are black and the highlighted area is silver. Now I was going to focus entirely on the silver and gold, but we also want the chair mail to look a little dirty and rusty, so we can also dry brush some brown directly onto it, preferably in areas close to where it meets the armour. So for this you have to be a little bit more careful, but you're just going to go straight over the uh, lead belcher colour once it's dry of course, with exactly the same technique, and you're going to use the brown, and you're going to wipe most of the paint off and then dry brush to make part of the chair mail look dirty. This might seem a bit weird if you're not used to weathering effects, but it, I assure you it is actually quite a normal technique to go over something that's pristine with colours to make it look as if it is worn out or dirty. It does actually make the, the models look a little bit more realistic. To make it a bit more clear what I'm doing, I'm also showing you the same steps on one of the other Plague Marines where the chainmail is a bit more showy rather than somewhat hidden from view. So we're just carefully going over the chainmail that I've already done in silver, but now we're dry brushing brown on top in areas that look like they might be corroded or you know maybe it's too much silver in one area and just want to break it up a little bit. It's done it should look something like this so you can see it's kind of corroded at the top and silver beneath and that should give you the effect that you're looking for now so far we've only discussed dry brush and chain mail but what about actually painting these as straight paints so I'm gonna do what I've done before and I'm going to paint them onto test bases with the idea being to show one and two coats over white, grey and black undercoats. Now I've always been instructed to paint these paints over black, but as you'll see as I do this, these particular ones are so heavily pigmented that whilst one coat looks best over black, two coats doesn't seem to matter as much. This isn't the greatest demonstration of painting ever. I hadn't really watered down the paint enough, so it was kind of running out as I was painting. But now we've watered it down a little bit more, it's working a lot better. This is one of the reasons why we always advise people to thin their paints, as in add water to them, so they actually flow off the brush a lot better. All right, so that's the lead belcher, one coat, and now we're gonna do the same thing with Balthazar Gold and a different brush. This time I've actually watered it down properly so it flows off the brush. And one thin coat does actually reveal that obviously it's brighter where it's white or gray and darker where it's black, but also if you have a bit of white or gray showing through, it sort of looks wrong. Whereas with the black showing through, it kind of looks like, yeah, that makes sense. But as I say, these two are so densely pigmented that actually once you do a second coat, pretty much nothing shows through. Moving on to that second coat, I'm only doing half the base so you can see what the difference is between the two. I'll show you some still pictures afterwards as well so you can see the difference. But I think this makes quite a clear case for doing two thin coats rather than just one. Uh, although it does kind of disprove my idea of painting it over black. Same for the gold, second coat. And much like the lead belcher, this one's very similar, other than being gold. It actually has quite an opaque look to it once you've done the second coat. Now, if that wasn't particularly clear on video, I've taken some still pictures. These were only taken on my phone, but I think they convey it well enough. You see the left side only has one coat and shows the colors underneath the white, the gray, and the black, whereas the right side is two coats and shows pretty much nothing through. So this does really make the case for two thin coats being the best. Now, with that in mind, we're actually going to start painting the trim. We're going to start with the gold colour on the large shoulder trim and all 
the leg trim and so on and any other areas where it seems appropriate based on things like the box art so we're going to use balthazar gold and as ever we need to shake our paints thin our paints and apply two thin coats Now because some of these areas are quite small and I need to not go over the edges, I'm going to use the Citadel S layer brush, which is quite a fine tipped brush, just to make sure that I'm not going over the edges and I can get into all of the details with a nice thin tipped brush rather than some of the larger ones that I have available. So again, to keep the length of the video reasonably short, I'm not going to show absolutely every brush stroke of doing this, but I will show you starting off doing the shoulder pad and then finishing off with one of the legs, which has a lot of trim on it, but it's quite thin. I hope that you can already see that this is making quite a dramatic difference to the look of the model. It looks sort of one thing to have the shoulder trim black it looks quite different to have it this kind of dark gold or bronzy color As you can see here, one of the reasons for using a fine tip brush is that you do want to go just over the edge of the trim, but not in a way that puts a lot of paint on the green army. You just want it to roll over the edge and no more. And so whilst that does take a bit of practice, you'll find this kind of small brush is actually the best for it. Because if you do it just right, you can do it whilst you're painting along rather than making separate brush strokes just for that. When you're just starting out you might need to do a few more brush strokes but you soon get used to it. Right, moving swiftly along we've done most of the trim as you can now see but we still have the left leg to do. Well it's the right of the screen but it's the play marine's left leg. And it's just a case of painting raised areas that we've already painted black with a coat of Balthazar Gold. spot a little bit of black peeking through at this point as I showed you on the basis though it doesn't really matter because if you come back and do a second coat you pretty much eradicate all of that just by having two thin coats so I suppose I could have got away with not painting these black but it's a lot easier to see what you're doing if they are already painted black. Sorry if you can't always see what I'm painting. I am trying to make the point that you do need to turn the model every which way to see what you're painting and get in at every angle. I can't always show it to the camera when I'm doing this though. go that's the first coat of gold paint now having given it some time to dry at least one hour we can then start a second coat of the same color obviously in that time I've gone over all of the other plague marines their backpacks gun arms etc so you can see a little bit in the background they are actually gold trim now just like this guy but they do also all need second coats at this point
Now this is something I didn't show in the step before. You do actually paint the inside shoulder and over the edge underneath of these shoulder pads. Um, it's always something that I've done and it tends to make the thing look more three-dimensional because the, the color goes all the way around. Uh, so obviously I did this with the first coat, I just didn't show it on the video of that, so it was literally the next thing I did after switching off the camera. Some minutes later, we've done most of it now and we just need to finish off the leg as before. This is a little bit easy because obviously we've already done this gold once, but we just need to go over it again just to make sure that it has the proper coloration and that there's no black showing through or even the original uh, green color just on the trim, obviously. Uh, we want the green armor color to remain on the armor. I don't know how well it shows on the camera, but there is still a little bit of black poking through, particularly on the thinnest bits of trim and certainly underneath this bit of trim here. And so going over it for a second time also makes sure that we get to go over those bits just in case there is any tiny area that's been missed already. Um, so whilst I generally recommend two thin coats, assuming that you paint over exactly the same area each time, it can also allow you to correct any errors that you've made along the way, whereas doing one coat you might miss something and not realise you've missed it until a lot later, when it might actually be harder to correct. Now, it might seem like I'm laboring the point slightly on this bottom bit of leg trim, but you've got to understand there's a couple of areas where the arm is designed to look like it's splitting and then one part has a tentacle, tentacle coming out of it. And it's actually quite hard at this point to see which bit's meant to be leg armor, which bit's meant to be trim, and which bit is meant to be uh, the split in the armor. And so I'm, I'm sort of going back and forth trying to figure out which bit is which. And of course you have to remember the bits of the leg trim that are on the side rather than on the front, which are also easy to miss out. Okay, so that's done and it should look something like this when it's had two coats of gold. Obviously there are some areas where the gold is slightly overlapping some details, but hopefully not overlapping onto the armor. Moving swiftly along, now that we've done the gold and let it dry, we need to do the silver, in this case Games Workshop Lead Belcher, which is a sort of dark silver or gunmetal colour, and we're going to use this on all of the silver details that aren't the chainmail that we've already dry brushed. So these details vary from model to model, but a couple of them have spikes on the helmet. So we're going to start there. And then I'm also going to do the grenade on the side and also the, the little things, I don't know what you call them, on the sides of the helmet. Those are also to be painted silver. Just as before with the gold, I think you can see an almost immediate difference in how this makes the model look. Obviously being careful not to get it overlapping with the gold there already, um, but it's very quickly changing the look of the model, heading towards what we call a three color minimum. Now I've referred to this once or twice. The only reason why that's important is that sometimes if you're entering a tournament, they will insist on your models having at least three colors on them in order to consider them as painted for which there's usually extra points on offer in the tournament. 
So just doing the green armor, the gold trim and the silver details would bring it to that three color minimum, even though there's still going to be lots of details that aren't yet painted. This is also one of those stages when you start to make assumptions about the paint job. So I'm assuming that the handle of this sort of uh, stick bomb type grenade is going to be black. And I'm also assuming that the three little skulls poking out front and rear are molded into the metal rather than being bone or, you know, some kind of decayed Nurgle rot sort of color. Um, Partly because if it was going to be Nurgle's Rot, it would probably be green, and there's already going to be a lot of green on this model. Of course, I'm taking extra care around the leg so as not to get any silver on the leg armor where it shouldn't be. But I do also need to make sure that every part of the grenade is painted, including the bot bit on the bottom of the handle, which has a ring which is being held by a tentacle. Now, another thing I would point out is there are a lot of rivets on this model, which also need to be painted silver. Now, judging by the earlier efforts with the base i may get away with just painting these once particularly as i intend to use wash on all of them so they don't need to be like a mega silver color to begin with because the wash will really really boost the contrast but it's fairly easy to paint them you can just get paint on the under the brush and just sort of dab it on I tend to try and paint a little circle so as to get paint all the way around the edges. Um, it's really your choice. I tend to find if I just poke a heavily loaded brush, I tend to paint too big an area. Painting all of these rivets in is one of those stages that takes a very long time, but it is also worth the effort people tend to recognize when you've put in a lot of effort. Even if it's not something that they would be willing to do, they tend to recognize that it makes things look better. And so it is worth just putting the time and I'm not going to show you every rivet on camera. I've already done some of them on the upper body, um, but just showing you the technique for how to paint them. And you can assume from there that I've done all of the ones on the other Death Guard and all over the backpacks and everything else. So having let that dry, it's got one coat of silver and all the rivets done, but now we need to do a second coat of silver on all the details. As I say, I'm probably not going to do second coats on the rivets, but I will still be using a fine tip brush to paint these with. Exactly the same technique again, but now we're going over for a second time. I hope you can see that it is actually making the color quite a lot stronger. It may not be that obvious on camera, but I'm hoping by the time we get to the end, it'll show up nicely in a still picture.
as I say, I didn't show it in the previous clip, but I do go over these things on the side of the helmet. I don't actually know what the proper name for them is. In my head, I think of them as earmuffs, but that's probably completely wrong. Just as before, going over the silver on the grenade, just to make sure that every area is covered without going onto the uh, leg armor or anything, but just to make sure it has a solid color all over and in every detail. These skulls in particular tended to miss out a little bit the first time around. Now, not only do we do the Plague Marines themselves, but we've also done the guns and backpacks and everything. And so I'm going to show you doing the separate gun for that particular Plague Marine, simply because I think it makes a fairly obvious difference, whereas it maybe wasn't that easy to see on the Plague Marine body itself. So just this gun barrel alone is getting quite a lot better from the second coat. seem unnecessary to paint these areas that will actually be up against the body. The problem with those areas, and one of the reasons why I paint the model somewhat in pieces like this, is because you can still see them with your eyes, even if you can't reach them with a paintbrush once it's assembled. So I always make sure to go over them, even if it seems initially unnecessary. Thin areas like this are where a fine tip brush is absolutely essential because if I was using anything thicker I'd be accidentally painting over the fingers again and then I'd have to go and correct that with more greens. So it's really best if you can avoid making accidents like that happen uh, but obviously it's not that hard to correct if you do, it's just a bit more work. So hoping you can see that I have actually painted the little rivets on the gun. I don't think I'll be going over them a second time, but I have painted them the first time, just to make sure that those are actually highlighted. That's finishing off the details on the gun. Obviously, I've gone along and done the same steps on the backpacks and all of the other Death Guard. And this is what they look like at what is technically a three color minimum. You've got the highlighted and shaded green armor, the trim picked out in Balthazar Gold, and all of the silver details picked out in Games Workshop Lead Vulture, which, as you can see, has a slightly different effect on some of the other models, like this sword, for example. And we also highlighted the chamber. Right, if you've watched this far, firstly, thank you for watching. If you did like it, please hit like, hit subscribe, hit the little bell-shaped icon so that you know when the next video will be coming out. I'm hoping to keep a release schedule of about two videos a month.